we talked in the offensive tapes that uh, the style we play, whether it's an umbrella or a uh, drop back style of offense is really based upon the rules of the game and, and the style that's being called during that particular uh, time in, in, in water polo history. Well, the same things are true of defense. Uh, what we emphasize and how we teach defense and how we train it has a lot to do with what offenses are running and in turn uh, these are controlled uh, by the rules and what the referees are calling. So at one time in history we may find that guarding a driver uh, may be of utmost importance and as an example now uh, that the two meter man is, is so difficult to guard without being ejected uh, many, many teams are dropping back uh, defensively to protect that two meter guard and as a result, we see fewer drives. But uh, as we develop uh, these instructional tapes, uh, we, we need to consider uh, the basic facts and factors. And that is that uh, over the course of time, we're going to have to defend drivers. Over the course of time, we're going to have to learn to play drop back defense. And, and we need all these skills to be a totally rounded player. Uh, and as rules change and as interpretations change, we can uh, make the necessary adjustments. Uh, with that in mind, then, as we move into Volume 2 uh, defense, let me just briefly outline uh, the things that we want to be uh, addressing uh, in, in this particular area. Uh, number one, we are going to look at guarding the, with the individual again and improving the defensive, individual defensive player's skills. Uh, first of all, with the driver. Uh, later in the tape, we will come back and, and, and discuss the uh, difficulties of guarding the two-meter man under present interpretations and, and come up with some ideas on that. Uh, uh, we'll look at team uh, defensive skills. And then we're going to come in and take a look at the, the actual types of defenses uh, with full teams working them both in, in practice and, and, and game action. And that would be the pressing defenses and the different modifications you might have there and the drop back defenses, uh, gap drop back, uh, uh, point drop, six drop, uh, that type of thing. We'll really go into uh, a lot, you know, hopefully a lot of detail in those areas as well. But this is a, basically what we're going to be looking at. And finally, uh, we'll talk uh, briefly about uh, a counterattack defense. That needs to be addressed because that's seven on seven uh, uh, defense as well. The one area that we're not going to get into will be uh, five on six defense. You will find that uh, in our uh, volume instructional tape, special situations, offense and defense. And that's where we really get into the five-man defenses. Everything we talk about, volume one and volume two, uh, really has to do with seven-on-seven seven, uh, defensive uh, individual and team skills. Okay, now, I just, with that as a little bit of a preface, want to uh, say this again about, uh, you know, there's just nothing more important than playing good defense. If you want a good water polo team, hey, they have to play good defense. And I'm not going to go back over all of that. We really approach this and discuss this uh, in volume one. But, um, you know, players just have to develop their individual skills. Then they have to develop their team skills, how they relate to their fellow defensive players. Uh, we use a lot of scouting. Uh, to set up the final, just as they would in football or basketball, to set up, you know, the final uh, defensive adjustments you're going to make, whether it's in a drop or whether it's a press, whatever you happen to be running. Uh, as I say, a lot of, of video scouting there. Uh, but, but players need to be able, first of all, they've got to master their individual skills. But once that, they've got to realize that, you know, it's not like I've got my player, how are the rest of you doing? That, that they've got to, to, to really be... Uh, helping their fellow player. And, and we've got to really think of defense as uh, a lot of factors. You've got the walls of the pool. You know, those are defenders. I mean, that sets the, the frame, and, and the offense has to deal within those boundaries, uh, whether it walls or lanes. Uh, all individual players uh, are, are dealing with positioning and space. Uh, they've got their player, and, and you've really got to be playing your man and, and, and doing the job on your man, but you've also got to be helping uh, with other situations, other players. And, and you're really, any player out there is really covering two players at one time and, and is positioning himself in relationship to, to, as I say, the boundaries of the pool and within the, 
uh, rules of whatever defense you're playing at that time uh, to maximize his position to get the most out of the defense. And, and these are all the things now that, that we, we want to address. All right, first of all, then let's go to the driver. You, you know, defending the driver uh, in volume one, we looked at in how we positioned, what the things were important not to get into trouble as a, and I'm not going to go back and reiterate that, reiterate that, but I do want to in a moment refer to the chart and show you now how we're going to do team drills. Now we're going to take this as you uh, would coach this and look at uh, team drills uh, to build these different defensive skills. And I might say this, that, that, that I spend as much time practicing and scrimmaging defense as I do uh, practicing and scrimmaging offense. It's just that vital within uh, your system of play. And then uh, I just don't feel coaches spend enough time on defense, and this is really where it all begins. When the defense is playing well, the rest of the aspects of the game will take care of themselves. But boy, that defense has got to be solid. So anyway, coming back, we're going to look at, at uh, team drills on defending the driver individually, uh, uh, and then we're going to learn how to defend him correctly first, uh, then we'll look, look at drills to recover from a little mistake, and then drills to recover from a major mistake. And, and let me interrupt that right now and, and, and say this, that uh, as I would break that out, I expect our players individually to be playing well on their man 80% of the time, say over the course of a game. And, and if we can train them and get them where they can really handle themselves well 80% of the time, then 15% of the time they're going to make maybe a little mistake. And, but not a major mistake, not something that they can't recover from individually if they're trained and taught to recover from it individually. And finally, we hope that maybe only about 5% of the time will they make the kind of mistake that's going to be necessary to get help from other players. So. As we now look at these team drills, we'll look at playing good defense first because that's 80% of the time that we, you know, let's train the thing we want to do. And then we'll spend 15% of the time uh, as a coach with team drills on recovering from a little mistake because that's about the percentage breakdown there. And then I'll only spend 5% on the major mistakes. In other words, where we've got to switch to cover because if I'm going to spend all my time uh, practicing just switches, uh, I'm saying that we're not going to be doing a very good job individually, and if we don't do a good job individually, we're not going to do a good job as a team. So uh, we'll go and, as I say, work 80% of the time in, the, in playing good defense. Now, that we'll take from individual skills, and as I say, through to the 15% of a little cover-up, uh, through to the 5% uh, of, of, of a major cover. All right, then following that, we'll look at some of these team uh, things again, but again, uh, in total drills, uh, practice drills, uh, time switches, gap filling for two meter switch outs, because that's still a part of the game, you know, even under the present rule interpretations. Um, you know, th th this type of, of thing, we'll, we'll look, at, look at all of that and uh, you know how to break sequences as a team you know, and how to, how to run this sort of uh, drills. All right, from there then, um, uh, we will m move ahead. We're going to look at all of these in the water, and then we'll come back and sit down for a few minutes before we set up our, our uh, pressing and uh, drop back defenses and look at all a variety of approaches in, in these areas. All right, now let me move over to the chart just for a second uh, so that we can uh, see what we have here uh, as we move to the water. Uh, this will just let us focus in right away. I'm showing the seven and eight meter drive, and as I teach uh, players uh, to defend um, in the half court, obviously the main driving positions are the 11 o'clock, the 12 o'clock, and the one o'clock. So as we set up our team drills, players have got to learn to position themselves correctly to play the proper defense at uh, where the drives are really going to kick off from, and that is from seven and eight meters. And uh, we'll really get into this as we look at players, dry, you know, covering other players uh, in these drills. But let me just simply say this. As we look at 11 o'clock, uh, we obviously want to keep this driver. We want to give him a place to go, but a place he doesn't want to go. This way, out towards the wall, back out this way. But we want to keep that player out 
as much as possible out of what we would call the strike zone. And maybe I'll bring that area out even a little farther. This area right out in, in front of the cage, we don't want him inside of us here. We want uh, to try to protect that area as much as possible and keep him outside of the strike zone. So we definitely want the inside track here as we are playing the defense. And as we will say, and did say in volume one, we'll say a hundred times on this tape, uh, when we're playing driver defense, the idea is to prevent this driver from getting inside water. Everything bad happens when he beats us to the inside, the four meters, the ejections, or the shot. Once we want to cut inside water down and move, maneuver our body, uh, you know, so that he cannot get to inside water, and that is critical. As a result, with these seven and eight meter drives as they start out, we know that in our system, we will get stair-step help, and we'll come back and really look at that in drills in a moment, but we'll get stair-step help as this player is driving across. If he stops in RVs, we're going to get help from outside to stop, but we're going to still have to try to prevent it, but we're going to get some help from outside on that, between four and six meters. By so doing, then this defensive player can really concentrate on cutting down uh, inside water. Now, uh, what would be the rules of 11 o'clock would be the rules of 1 o'clock, so we don't even need to get into that. But here you're going to find this point drive really is a critical position. This is a critical position to defend, and this is why we need to practice in the uh, playing defense with 11 o'clock, playing defense with the 12 o'clock driver, point driver, and playing defense with a 1 o'clock driver. Now, with this 12 o'clock, he can go either way, and this is where scouting really comes in because we are probably going to offset him to the left or to the right, depending upon what we know about this particular player, which way he wants to go, which way he shoots. And we're going to force him to the side that he is least effective and still obviously try to not let him get inside anyway. But besides that, we're going to be forcing him to go to a side uh, where he is, is least effective uh, with, his, with his shooting. And we're going to force the right-hander to go away from his shooting arm, the left-hander to go away from his shooting arm. But in all cases, we're going to really scout and see what this player really wants and then really work to take it away from him. And still following the same rules, and particularly here where he's coming from a little bit deeper out, we've really got to protect inside water and look for help, stair-step help uh, from four to six meters. All right, now let's move over here because we're talking about playing good defense, and let's now look at the next drills we'll look at, and that will be... Uh, moving this drive up to what would be the wing positions, looking at the four and five meter drives, which would be uh, wing depth uh, types of drives. And now the whole thing changes here because this player doesn't have a lot of room to work with before he's contending with the goal and the goalkeeper. So the first move here is not quite so much swimming involved, is just simply as is, the, is in the case of the seven and eight meter drive, is if this player is coming this way, is just simply to get that inside water cut down and then once you've cut it down where you know that this player can't work inside any longer now and only here now can you come to the vertical and protect with the hands and go for the ball because this player is either going to pop and try to get a shot or he's going to reverse back out here anyway uh, but the key move is to, to, to make that first move with both arms and both legs to cut down the inside but then we can come to the vertical whereas if we come back here with a seven and eight meter drive if we come to the vertical early or if we go to arm play early out here on these plays, we're going to get ourselves either beaten to the inside or we're going to get ejected because we're going to get tangled up with that driver. And we are really working to positioning for a longer period of time, accepting help with a seven, eight meter drive, where in this case, we're probably not going to get help because it'd be too far to stair step. So we're just going to cut the inside water down. We've got goalie help here and then come to the vertical because really it's all over. They're not, there isn't the room left to drive. So we're looking at good defense. This is what we're going to, these are the drills we're going to run 80% of the time. All right, now let's flip the chart over and now let's look at with the drills that we're going to run 15% of the time. And that would be the extra stroke drill. And now the goalie, when the goalie is always obviously important in defense, uh, very, very important. But now he really comes into play here because what we're saying here in looking at this, we're going to practice 15% of the time on this person having us beaten a little bit. And we don't want in the drills, 
to have this player jump in front and then start conserving water to get this player ejected. Because what we're working on is catching this player. We're, this is not an offensive drill. If we were practicing offense and we got an advantage position, obviously we'd be over in front of him trying to get him ejected. But, but now we're, we, we're, we're practicing D. So this player is going to pretty much take a straight line drive at this post. And this player is going to be working to, and now let's bring him up here and bring that circle here to, to get caught up here and edge ahead shoulder to shoulder here and then reach with that outside hand, in this case the left arm, a uh, roll and reach across the face, force the shot cross cage, and but not to get on the back and get the ejection. We really demonstrated that volume one because players are so so oftentimes we'll jump on this player's back. We want to keep swimming, keep swimming, keep swimming. And you'll see this as we look at these team drills, or you'll see a lot of these. But get, don't make this move early. Get caught up and at least shoulder to shoulder, maybe just even a little bit past that, and then reach across that face. This player's got to contend with the ball. He's got to attend with a goal, contend with the goalkeeper anyway. This is not an easy shot. It is a lot easier shot if the player can move to the penalty line. So let's let the goalie make the save. Uh, as I say, this guy's got a tough shot anyway. We'll take the extra stroke, reach across the face, force this player uh, to take the shot cross cage. Now, the way we force the player to take the shot cross cage is that with the extra stroke drill, we know this player is staying at home on the two-meter man, so the goalkeeper literally puts his body on the strong side of the cage and we will allow no scores or no shots here. They would have to put it right through the player's navel or his chest uh, uh, to score the ball here. And this is where goalkeepers make mistakes. They don't shut down. They're always worried about cheating back here, and the player will still get the easy goal to the strong side. We want to totally block this strong side here with that goalkeeper and force this player to go cross cage with a shot. Now. Uh, as you practice team drills and you're in a half court, the offense is always fresh, the offense knows exactly what's happening, and they'll get some shots off and they'll drop this ball on little lobs or cross cage. But I'll tell you right now, in a game where you've been countering, playing both ends, playing for the four quarters, believe me, the extra stroke drill, the goalie shutting this corner down is really going to play high dividends. And that's what water polo is on defense and offense anyway. It's playing the percentages. And this is what you want here and force them to take the harder shot coming across the defensive player. All right, we'll practice that 15% of the time. And I'm really trying to emphasize that, that we're going to practice this 15% of the time. Now we're going to come down to what's a very difficult part of the game for players to learn because so many people are involved, and that's switching. But when we're saying switching, we're admitting now we're making major defensive errors, and we've got to cover up for somebody. And if we're practicing 80% of the time good defense and then practicing from recovering from the little mistake, uh, obviously we shouldn't get into a switch situation very often. And that's what I'm saying as we start practicing these switches. And let me just say this. We're looking now, and we're going to talk about what I call the court of last resort, the switch off the two-meter man because there's no one else that can help once we get in this close. So I want to make my first point, and that is we want to try to, if we've got a switch for a player, we would like to try to switch early. In other words, if this is like a seven, eight meter drive out here, if we can switch a player here across and make that and then swing this player over to pick this player up, uh, you know, an early switch here, we always want to make the, if we've got room to maneuver, we want to make that early switch. Because when we get down to the two meter switch, it is the court of last resort. Obviously, if this player switched in and this player over here drove back door, we wouldn't be necessarily ahead. So, uh, but there will be a lot of times, that, and always the theory should be, we'll make the outside switch first as a team if we can. But when it comes down to the court of last resort, we follow a very simple rule. And that is this player stays at home. And he, un until he knows that this player, this defender here is, is badly beaten and there's no way uh, that he's going to maybe even be able to, to catch him and do the extra stroke. In other words, we're in trouble. Now we follow a very strong rule here too, and that is this player can't go over two, two and a half strokes. If he's got to go three or four, it's just too wide. Stay at home and let the goalie make the save and hope this guy can catch up enough to maybe do the extra stroke. They'll turn him out or at least harass him. 
Uh, and but but if this guy's got to go three or four strokes, you, you're just dealing with too great a distances, and and you know it's it, you're in trouble, and you're going to end up with this guy free uh, as this player leaves. So what, when you're switching, you're really looking at switching a max distance of two two and a half strokes. All right, now in our system. When we make a switch, this player makes the decision because he can read this guy coming. And in turn, when he, he isn't going to stunt or fake, he isn't going to fake out and come back to his man because if he does, this whole thing's going to fall apart because what will happen is he'll fake out and back. This player will come over here and the goal will come back over here and we'll end up with three guys guarding this player and no one guarding this one. So I'm really emphasizing an important point here. And that is this player stays at home until he feels that this guy is going to hurt us and he only has to go two and a half strokes maybe to get him. And at that point in time, as this player is coming in now, this player, if he's determined with no faking, he is going to then release and charge across here and to cut this player down. Now, believe me, when he makes that decision and comes here to cut this player down, he will shut that drive down. There is no question. The problem is, is this player now setting the O here with this X over here on defending here. We've got that shut down. The thing that we've got to be concerned about is this player getting the ball back here. So here is what happens. And when this player, and this is why we can't have stunning or faking. When this player makes this move across, I mean, he just really jumps or leaps. This player is swimming in anyway, trying to, he's always working on the extra stroke drill, but he's keying with his eyes off of his defensive player. With the no fake, when this player makes his move, this man immediately comes here on the switch, and the goalkeeper also is keying off of this defensive player, and the goalkeeper releases and comes back to center cage, because we're going to have this shut down. If there's going to be a shot, it's going to come from a pass back to here, and so we're coming here with this man to cut that off, and we come back with the goalkeeper to also cut that off. So again, looking at these arrows, this is the way this goes. Here, arrow here, and we've got that, and the goalkeeper reading off of this man moves back to center. And we'll see this as we look at the drills now uh, in the pool. All right, now let's just stop right there, and let's go take a nice, nice long look now at um, um, teams working in the half court on these drills, uh, the 80% drills, the 15, and then finally the 5% drills to really hone our skills in defending the driver. After that, we'll come back and look at team skills. We'll come back and look at uh, guarding the two meter man. And finally, as we said earlier, uh, we will take a look at teams playing different defensive concepts and, and, and positioning uh, as we look at those concepts. All right, here we go to the pool. Here we are now in the water and in the half court. Uh, we're working on the 11 and, well, starting with the 11 o'clock drive from about seven meters out and we'll eventually move it across to 12 and 1 o'clock. Now, you can look at the two-meter man there. We have no defense on him. Uh, we've got white hats are going to drive against blues, but, uh, uh, you know, really, as long as your defensive player is in the right position to start out with, uh, you could even intermingle or mix your hats. Uh, so, you know, in this case, we're going to run all the white hats against the blues, but uh, that's not even critical. The critical thing is uh, we've got no defense on the two-meter man. All we're asking him to do now is to make a pass if the drive gets free. Otherwise, uh, let's just bring that next drive right after it. And, uh, you know, and that, that's, that's real important. We don't want the pass if there isn't anything there. We'll just bring the next drive, remembering that we're stressing defense. Now, you saw that right there. That was really an offensive foul. We should have probably just stopped the drill right there, meaning that the uh, white-hatted player was in good defensive position. All right, now let's watch and let's see if they're following the rules. Are they swimming, swimming, not defending with the arms uh, until they get, you know, in, into where they, in a position uh, to come to the vertical when that player has run out of uh, driving room. And remembering, as we've stressed, that in a ball game we've got, uh, you know, six pairs out there and we've got a lot of stair-step help. So uh, we are going to simply ask 
uh, that that defensive player maneuvers his body and keeps that offensive player from getting inside. Now, I see he started to get inside, but the player did that extra stroke drill right there at the end and turned him out. Now, let's just watch. Now, see, there was an RB, and we don't want uh, RBs in this drill. Later, we will, you, you know, in other words, we always start from the simple and then move to the more complex. And right now, we want to keep it simple, and that is that ball is, is you, you're really cutting down inside water, and we're not even going to allow the driver uh, to rear back uh, in, the, in these first drills. We're simply saying that driver is, can do everything other than offensive foul to get inside water. We want to find out, can that defensive player really take the inside away? Now, did you notice how that player lifted his hand? Remember volume one? We said if you lift an arm out, you already lost one quarter of your maneuvering ability, that arm came up in that previous drill too soon. Now look at that player got to the back rather than going uh, the extra stroke drill. All right, now as we've set this, and as I say, in, in, in a ball game, we'd be stair-step help. Uh, so if the RB comes too early, uh, we, we know we got help from behind. We'll look at that later in drills. All right, let's just check this now. He's swimming through, swimming. Good, good. Now take that extra beautiful defense there. Just exactly what we're looking for. All right, here comes that blue driver again, coming hard. Keep swimming, swimming, so swim. oh, See, he reached across his back. That could, if the referee is, is it, of a mind, uh, was in a position uh, to give either a four meter or an ejection. Did you notice the goalie did not have that strong side cut down uh, either? All right, let's just keep following these for a few minutes because, again, as in all of these tapes, uh, we can see both the you know, when it's done right and when it's done wrong. Now, that brings up another thing. Do you see him run right over that two-meter man? In this drill, if that offensive player tries to rub the defensive player off on the two-meter man, what we ask the two-meter man is to simply duck under the water. Hey, in a ball game, there's a guard on that two-meter man. That'd be an easy switch. But the purposes of this drill, if they come over the two-meter man, just duck under the water and uh, uh, so that the, uh, they, they can't rub that, play, that uh, player off. All right, here we come. He got his hand. Just look at that. See? This is beautiful to see. The player raised his hand too early. Uh, uh, and to the outside, and immediately he was beaten by the, by the driver. You've got to swim. You've got to swim. Now, see, he got a hand up, and he's almost beaten. Now he recovers and takes the extra stroke, but they still got the shot off and the ball into the cage. What we are really telling you, and we've moved the drive now, as you can see, out to the point, these are really uh, critical skills. What we're talking about is very important. Right? Maneuver that body. Oh, he's got a hand up. He could be, but he still he recovered in time, took the extra stroke, and got things covered up. But we really want to use both arms. Look at that. Very nice. Both arms, both legs. Uh, to keep maneuvering for position, particularly from seven meters into about three and a half meters. After that, right there, now you can come up with that hand uh, because uh, there's no more room for that player to maneuver. All right, notice now uh, we're coming with a point drive. He swims. Oh, but he went to the back. See, he should have just kept swimming, swimming, cutting to the inside. There was nothing there that goalkeeper could make that. All right, there's a switch back. Now swim, 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 stay inside, and he does. And the goalie is forcing that shot cross cage at that point in time. And, you know, the defense was successful. All right, here we come. Ooh, almost got both. Yeah, hands are up early. Uh, Might have been in trouble, but the, the uh, offensive player quit his drive. There's a change of direction. Keep swim, 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 and reach across. Very nice with the defense. And I think you really uh, can see uh, what we are really trying to stress here. And there's a stop and go. And ooh, and he got that hand over. It could have been an ejection. Uh, the stop and go, remember what we said in volume one. Uh, a stop and go should be an advantage to the defensive player because when the offense player stops, the defensive player can keep moving to the position he really wanted to be in, which is the inside in the first place. And But if you stop and the player goes, you're liable to be beaten to the inside. So uh, just don't, you know, when that player stops, use that uh, to your advantage to reposition yourself. Right, swimming nicely there, swim, swim, swim. Now be very careful of that left arm, that offside arm getting across the back. He took the extra stroke, but you don't want to put a hand on the front. Okay, there's a stop and go, keep swimming. Okay, he did. He recovered, kept swimming, 
turned that player to the outside and did a very, very nice job there. All right, now we've moved over to one o'clock swim. Swim keeps swimming, 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 and he forced a backhand shot, and that's a, that case would be a low percentage, and there would be some help from outside on it too. Swim, swim, swim. Now come across and cut him down. Very nice. Well, we've, you see, we've moved over one o'clock, and what we're doing now is in these drills, we're working from 11 o'clock, then to one o'clock, uh, to 12 o'clock, and then to one o'clock, working on positioning and playing position defense uh, uh, against these drivers uh, as they as they drive from the key driving uh, positions. And uh, what we're seeing is, is you know, you can really. Uh, easily see it and that is that when the player keeps maneuvering his body uh, and playing position uh, he really cuts that scoring possibility down now in a few minutes uh, uh, once we've worked uh, uh, these drills all the way across the board we'll come back and then we will allow that driver to actually RB and uh, see if the player can even react to that again knowing that we're going to get some help from that four to six meters but uh, we'll we'll keep adding and making it more difficult uh, for the drive defender but we start as simply as possible and then build all right now we're moving ahead now and we're just as we did with the chart we have moved the drive up now to five meters now there's an offensive foul <laughs> and uh, shake that one off but the positioning was obviously good and uh, now, now they have to be careful, uh, the, the white hat's driving, that we don't let that line get out too far. And remembering in this now, we've got a different principle, and that is because that drive, and obviously we don't work this at 12 o'clock, because if you played 12 o'clock with a five meter drive, you'd be starting drives right on top of the two meter man. That certainly uh, doesn't fit. And so uh, these are really the wing position, backdoor type of drives. Uh, and they're moved up uh, in an umbrella. Those wing positions are you know, anywhere from four to, to five and a half meters out uh, from the face of the cage. And so again, we stress the fact that we maneuver our body and then come to the vertical earlier. Because once that player uh, makes his first move, if we've cut inside water, he really doesn't have any more room and he's gonna have to either rear up and try to uh, paw the ball in or he's just gonna have to release out. And that's exactly what uh, we're working on here, that type of body positioning. Now, we're starting to slide across. We're gonna look at this uh, from the other side in just a few minutes. And I wanna stress that we work uh, on all of the key drive positions in our drills. And that is very important. Now look at, see, that was very nice because the defensive player had come to the vertical because he'd shut the inside water down and he helped the goalie with a save. All right, let's just watch some of these. He's got the ins, no, he didn't. And, but the goalkeeper had the strong side shut down uh, so there was no room to maneuver. All right, here he reverses back, back, back. Now see, that looks nice, but with that amount of time between the two meter man and the driver, that would be cut down by one of the outside players. So the defense was really adequate there and certainly there. See how that player had to back out to take the shot? He'd be backing right back into the defense. Now the only thing is we're getting here is we're starting just a little bit too far out with this. Uh, we should move this uh, up and I think we will in just a moment. We really want uh, the drive uh, to originate at about five meters. And uh, uh, so that remembering this, we are playing defense in relationship to distance away from the goal. And uh, uh, how we play that defense uh, uh, has to do with distance away from the goal. And the closer we get to the goal, the less danger there is of inside water drives, we can come to the vertical. The farther out the driver is, we'll play off of him. And really, uh, because with a drive coming from a deep distance, if we get beaten, I mean, they can really maneuver. So we're going to drop off a little bit and really play our position defense uh, to make things work. All right, now, let's just hold that just for a second. Having taken a look now at uh, the four and five meter drive, the wing drive, and shutting that down. And before that, looking at the 11, 12, and one o'clock, the major drive positions. Now, uh, let's move out and just going and making it more difficult for the defense. We've started as easy as we can. We've, we've developed the concept for the players. Now we're gonna move the drive out, uh, back out again to seven meters, and we're simply gonna add the next step. And that is the driver 
uh, can now uh, RB if he so chooses. So we're going to see, and there was an offensive foul because of good drive uh, defensive position, but we're going to see, um, uh, first of all, is the player really cutting down the inside, and in turn, can he, oh, very nice defense there. Now, beautiful shot, wow. Great shot, but uh, the defense was wonderful. Uh, that was such a quick release, it might have been hard to stair step to, but see now we're checking everything. Very nice defense there. We're just simply have, we're running the same drill we've been running, except we've added the RB, and we're catching now. Do we have the shot? Do we have the player cut down inside? And in turn, in cutting him down inside, uh, do we also uh, can we react pretty well to help our fellow stair-stepping player uh, with our man as he starts to RB? Now, let's just watch this as we go, and we'll see a lot of RB situations here because they've really cut. Uh, when the player goes to the RB, it really means that he hasn't been able to achieve inside, so we've really accomplished our purposes, and you can see with most of these drives now, that's exactly what's happening. There's a stop and go, now extra stroke, reach across, beautiful defense, beautiful defense. Let's just watch these and we'll come at, look at the player up. Look at that defensive player's legs up. Now swim, 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 swim. Keep the extra stroke and absolutely excellent defense there. Uh, really cutting down, doing what we want. Right, swim through with him, swim, swim. Now really pick it up and take the inside. Now it's a beautiful off the water shot, which we stressed in our front court offensive uh, tapes, but that was really, it was a goalie save. The field player's defense was excellent there. There's the stop and go, and that player got his arms up and uh, too early and uh, with a stop and go he was beaten to the inside and there was a reaction uh, there and the player got off a beautiful quick release RB but the defense in the field was good there again forced the RB meaning we're really effectively taking away inside water and uh, forcing the RB and there was a, a stop and go change of direction RB and the defense was excellent had everything shut down and okay there's arms up and see that took so long to to release that ball from the rear back there uh, that that would have been cut down from other players on the team and that right there also and we're also the goalies making some nice saves on this too but I think uh, we're really demonstrating our point here and as you can see we started at 11 o'clock with this and then we've already moved to 12 and now we've already moved over to the one o'clock and that's as we look at these team drills I want to just keep stressing that we need to practice playing the proper defense in each of the phases uh, uh, when a player can't RB and now later when we allow him to RB we still need to practice these defensive concepts playing against the driver at a, when he's coming from the 11 o'clock, playing against him when he's coming from the 12 o'clock, playing against him when he comes from the 1 o'clock. You just can't go practice one side and say that's enough. Hey, drives are going to come from all the spots, and I already told you on the chart, the point drive uh, is the most difficult uh, to stop. So uh, this is really important uh, you know, as we look now at individual skills, but in team defensive uh, drills. Now let's move on out and let's uh, take a look at that 15% 15 per 15 of the time. In other words, let's recover from a little mistake. Now, uh, I, I just have to emphasize that we practice and practice and practice deep. And I'm not kidding when I say that. And, and these drills you've just looked at, the 11, 12, 1 o'clock drive from 7 and 8 meters, and then the 4 and 5 meters, and then switching it out and letting the guy RB, we just keep adding and keep adding and keep adding. But we are really working on playing 80% of the time uh, you, you know, with 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 a good defense. Now we're in that 15th percentile where we're now saying it's a little mistake. Let's just watch it here as we set this thing up. Now uh, the player in the white hat is going to take pretty much a straight line drive. Remembering this is a defensive drill, not an offensive. We're giving him the advantage of a start, and then we're going to go uh, to the uh, catch up, get shoulder to shoulder, reach across the face, and see if that goalkeeper really shuts down the strong side. All right, now that player pinched in a little bit. Now see, he went cross cage. Hey, that's fine. Uh, it, it's not, we certainly don't want it in a ball game as far as a score, but believe me, when they're going back and forth, counterattacking, playing six on five, five man defense, all the various aspects of the game for an hour, uh, uh, they're not going to have, uh, be able to set that shot up that way. Uh, right now, 
uh, there's just three people out there and really two that are really emphasizing three counting the goalkeeper because the two meter man is just making the pass so they'll get a few goals in cross cage and they know in this drill right there they've got to go cross cage uh, and that's what we want you know because that if the goalkeeper's got the side shut down correctly that would be the only thing that'd be left for him but in a ball game as I say just just like that it's a very tough to go now there was excellent defense on the part of the Blues there they caught up and he reached across forced that shot uh, across cage. We call this again the extra stroke drill. We will practice this. I'm saying 15% of the time, but now see the goalie had the strong side shut down and that was really very, very important. Um, but we will practice this a lot too because this is about as much trouble as you want to, uh, to get into over the course of a game and that is that simply maybe through a stop and go or a quick change of direction or just excellent alertness uh, the player catches this and gets maybe that half stroke lead uh, and here we are now showing again we always run these things from both sides I just can't stress that enough uh, and uh, working this extra stroke drill now from uh, the one o'clock side and the whites playing defense there's that little lead now come hard keep coming okay there was a left-hander but see the left-hander didn't score it uh, uh, because the goal was shut down strong side uh, forcing the toughest shot possible now we're giving them a little bit too much of a lead there but see even with that force that shot uh, to go cross cage with the lob and nothing there now he's moved up a little bit now come hard here balls out there and reach across and turn him to the outside staying off the back the extra stroke drill we'll just watch this a couple of more times uh, just to see that we're getting the right skills there okay again the goalkeeper had the save there uh, simply because he was in the proper position and I keep stressing that but uh, goalie knowing the position he needs to be in and this is this is although it's individual defense this is really team concept defense and and with the extra stroke drill without a switch coming off the two meter man we've got that goalkeeper uh, putting himself in a position uh, which makes that shot uh, you know very very difficult uh, uh, to score okay let's move on now uh, to uh, some major mistakes and that is now that five percent area uh, making the final two meter switch uh, to shut down a free man the major mistake we are forced now to make the two meter switch now on the chart we really got into this as to how we key it and it's simply now see the, the two meter guard stayed at home that forces the goalkeeper to take the strong side and uh, the uh, player that's been beaten to keep coming and take the extra stroke in other words we're really back to the drill we just looked at because the two meter defender did not make the switch now here yeah he jumped there's the switch over they beat the switch but the goalkeeper was in the position having read the two meter switch off of his two meter guard he switched back to center cage and now see there was a little bit of a stunt and that just hangs the goalkeeper out uh, to drive there you, that, that that's what we're trying to avoid and this is good uh, to show some of the mistakes as well as some of the things right now I'm, I'm very serious that as we practice team defense and practice in these individual team defensive skills believe me uh, we're only working on this five percent of the time these, these, these two meter switches are tough and we just don't want to get ourselves in a position where we're gonna have to do this very often now to make this thing work and you see this sure they beat it there with a nice little tap back uh, the player probably switched a little bit early but in a game uh, most of the time you're gonna make the switch now there was a good read extra stroke drill goalkeeper stayed in the proper uh, position let's just watch this a couple of more times there are too many balls and that can always mess a drill up uh, no matter where you are but uh, the thing I want to stress here is that this is a tough switch and it's a, but you don't want to get yourself in a position where you have to make these kind of switches but even for experienced players making these switches very good now there was a nice one there was an excellent one and what I would suggest besides working them from both sides which is critical is to move your drive line closer to your two meter man so that you're really forcing like right there that switch now granted they beat it they didn't score it they beat it but in a game uh, that's not uh, th that switch would have really uh, gone well and I'm sure would have worked in, in a game uh, the advantage is really with the offense and this drill players need to understand it but let me 
come back to the point I was making as these players are switching across now uh, to the other side. And that is, uh, you know, start it by starting your drive line so that they're close enough that you're going to be within that two, two and a half strokes that the switch will be made. And as a result of that, uh, you can force switch after switch after switch. Then move it out a little bit and try to get the reads and following the rule that if the player has to go over two or three, uh, over three strokes, he's not going to make the switch and see if you can get the defensive reads. Right, let's just watch this a couple of more times. There's the switch. Uh, he beat it that time, knocked the ball down. Let's just watch one more. Uh, as I say, from the chart, you get the concept of what we're working with, and you also get the point is that, hey, I don't want to get into this situation too often. There it is across. Very, very nice. Uh, good switch, good readouts. Okay, we've looked at team drills and defending the driver. Uh, we've looked at team drills and recovering from a little mistake against that individual, the driver. And in turn, we looked at team drills uh, recovering with a switch on the major mistakes. And uh, uh, all very, very important in individual defense and just looking, as I say, at the uh, team drills. Now, let's talk briefly about this other guy, that the other individual that is uh, so important to defend, and that is your set man, your two meter man. Now in volume one, uh, we demonstrated uh, fouling and looking on the first drive. We demonstrated what would be illegal fouls. We uh, talked about some of the things that the two meter guard must think about. And uh, so we're not gonna go into a lot of detail here. And when we do go back to pool, we'll just briefly look at a couple of fouls on the two meter man. But I do think we've got to talk a little bit about uh, some of the necessities that have been brought about in recent years. Uh, the necessities as far now as guarding a two meter man because the role has changed considerably since 1981. We made reference to this when we did the entire uh, video on front court offense number three. Uh, the drop, you know, offense against the drop back defense. Uh, teams are having to face drop back defenses. Now we're talking about defense. Well, why would someone play drop back defense? Well, to help that two meter guard out. Uh, because it's a was always a difficult position to play. Now it's almost become impossible. And this brings me to my next point. Uh, in one of the other volumes, I said, hey, there are three specialists in water polo, three critical playing specialties that every team must have. We said the goalkeeper must be a great athlete. And this is if you're going to have really a top-notch team. We said the Along with a goalkeeper, we had to have a great athlete at two meters. And teams that had great two meter play, great goalie play, we could build around that and uh, probably produce an outstanding uh, team if we had those two positions solid. Well now I think since 81, with the referee's interpretation of ejecting that two meter guard so quickly, we've almost now come to where we need that third specialist and we must really train him uh, in a play and specialty and that is the two meter guard uh, it's as I said it's impossible to play in the first place because uh, you're probably going to be ejected uh, over the course of a game because sometimes now it seems just the slightest fouls and, and uh, a player can be uh, removed so what am I saying and what am I recommending here well number one as a playing specialist now I think that Obviously, with the international level teams, uh, the, the type of player that, that coaches are looking for here uh, beside, is the player that has great, great legs, great speed out of the backcourt because you've got to counter that two meter player out of there. But you're really looking at that player that's six foot six to six foot eight. And that sounds ridiculous, but those players are now available in water polo. And uh, it needs to be that long and, and lean and lanky player with those long arms and the great leg support that can snake around that two meter man and, and, and just really can outreach him. And because that's almost uh, the only way he can be defended. And I'll tell you this, when you play against a great two meter man, uh, you're going to have to defend him. You've got to make contact. You've, really, you've got to play for the ball, but I mean, you, there's going to be contact. And, and, and if you're not, and it's a great two meter man, he's either going to turn you and, and have you, you know, be moving towards the goal for a shot, or he's going to be able to sweep the ball or backhand the ball on you because uh, 
the international level two meter man is, is you know generally as I say is really an outstanding player so he almost has to be guarded with a foul but the technicality there is that almost any foul now or anything that's just a little uh, excessive uh, too firm whatever you want to say and that player's gone uh, so we really got now to train specialists. I, I think that a, a team of 13, you have 13 on an international team, I think at least uh, three and probably four of those players should be two-meter defensive specialists because uh, they're going to get a couple of ejections over the course of a game. But as they're trained and learn how to foul, and if they've got the great physical size and the great legs and are really working on this particular single phase of the game, uh, that's almost uh, your best chance. But simply, if they make just what might have been considered an average foul in the past, uh, they are in jeopardy of being ejected. And that is precisely why we see so many drop back defenses. Now, people are dropping back to protect that two meter guard. And with a two meter playing guard playing specialist and drop back defenses, uh, you've probably got uh, your best chance of playing uh, good two-meter defense. Now I'm going to refer to the chart here just for a brief moment and come over and and let's just look here. It would be a press. Uh, you can see the X is playing the defense. I've drawn uh, the dark here uh, for the location of the ball. And so we got a typical uh, press with a hole being fronted and uh, the player is off in the offside. We'll talk about this a little later. Uh, kind of moving in a lane, a lane meaning getting in the way of a pass, going cross court. And hey, this is a very successful uh, defense at at the younger levels. It, it truthfully is, and and I, you know, I recommend it very highly. And we've played it uh, for years. But the higher the level you go, uh, it becomes almost impossible uh, to front and a, a really international class or top collegiate class uh, two meter man. They're just too good. And so, uh, and it isn't just that two meter man, but it's those uh, five other field players out there uh, in that umbrella or whatever the structure might be that are releasing hard and, and, and are able to get free of their defensive player and can, are really good at putting that ball, placing that ball back in uh, to the two meter man. And I'll tell you, uh, I don't care how good you are at two meter defense or how good your outside players are, uh, if you're in the upper echelons or upper levels of, of, of water polo play, uh, I'm just telling you that it's basically impossible uh, to front uh, the two meter man, the good two meter man for any length of time. You're going to get out position and then if that return pass in is on the money, you're liable to be gone anyway. And it's a result of this that uh, uh, so many teams uh, tactically have now started to drop back, at least on occasion, uh, to aid uh, their two-meter guard. As I say, when we go to the water, we'll look very briefly at a little bit of two-meter play again, but that's a, primarily what we want to say about it. It's a playing specialty now. Train the players to foul. Uh, teach them how to foul. Get your three or four players that are going to be those specialists at the younger levels. Get those tall, thin kids with those long arms and legs and the good leg support. And, uh, you know, they can work on positioning, but they're going to be out positioned and they're still what you're really after is those good legs and that good reach to get a piece of that ball and, and just keep that two meter player uh, off balance. And then you're going to have to expect help if the rule calls stay the way they are now, you're still going to have to expect some help uh, from your uh, other team members. All right, let's drop that for the moment. Now we've talked about defending the driver. We've talked about defending the two-meter man. Let's move it up the next step now, and let's talk about general team, uh, some general team uh, things that we can do, uh, drills which will uh, aid uh, in our team defensive concepts, whether we're playing a press or a drop back, there's two or three things we can look at now, uh, and we'll take a look at them on the chart, and then we'll move it over in the water and take a look at some drills uh, that will make your team defense better. And remember, hey, we're, we're talking about doing a good job on the individual, as we started to set at the start of this volume, we're doing a good job on the individual, but we've also got to be playing within the team concept, and we're always really thinking of of other aspects as well as just our man to defend out there. Okay, let's move over and let me just take this first chart off here. All right, now, and I just want to look through this very quickly, but as we go to the water, 
Uh, the first team drill we're going to look at is what we call stair stepping. And simply what we're saying in stair stepping is we are going to stair step for two reasons, not just one reason, but we're going to stair step to take the shot away, and we're going to stair step to take a passing a pass away from the two meter mat. Now, looking at the chart, let's just say that this particular player, let's say he takes a head fake and he starts a drive across here. And as he comes across, let's say he's beaten this X. So we've got this type of a situation here with this X beaten here. Stair stepping simply means stepping back in. And in this case, with a pass coming from the two meter man, we would have to take the shot away. Now, I want to really stress, and we'll stress it in the water, when you're drilling this, just play touch tag. Just get up and touch the player's uh, back or shoulder here to let them know that you defended them. Let them go ahead and take the shot. Let the goalie make the save, uh, whatever. But you don't want to take a chance of a shoulder injury uh, in practice. So just step in and play a touch tag. All right, now, there's another thing. Let's just use the same drive here. A head fake, he comes across. Now, even though this player is beaten or maybe he's not beaten, what we want to do and we have a simple rule. As a drive passes behind us, we are going to step in here very briefly like this, like this. If this drive kept coming here, then this player would step in. We're simply going to step back in to take the passing lane to discourage the two-meter man from making the pass in the first place, and secondly, if the man is up, to take the shot away. All right, we could be bringing the drive from anywhere. It was coming across this way. The same rules would prevail. He'd be dropping in. He would be dropping back, and finally, this player to take this cross drive uh, away from both the driver and the pass away from the two meter mat. All right, we'll really see that as we look at the training tapes. All right, the next thing we're gonna look at out there are time switches. Now this is the only triangle switch that I teach uh, in water polo. And what we do on this defensive drill is just simply draw the foul here at two meters and we're gonna ask the two meter man to make the bad pass. He's gonna overpass the ball, force this player to retreat out here. This player will come out and if he fouls him out here, tweed here, when that foul takes place out here, this player simply will drop in and front the hole. And rather than this player, we're just saying he's too far away to drop back in, he will make the switch over here. He'll just simply come over and take this position. And this player, once he's fouled out here, has got to get the ball alive. So he's going to have to come out, back to this player. Now he'll start in, and you'll hear us, and I'll count it out on the tape. And we looked at this in volume one, too, but we'll look at a lot of drills. Here in time switching, uh, you can buy anywhere from four to seven seconds where you can have that hole not only doubled and refronted, uh, but really slow the offense down and take us anywhere from four to seven seconds off the clock. All right, finally, we're going to look at what we call filling gaps. This is a, still remains, in my opinion, an important concept. Now, with all of these dropbacks, with less pressing, uh, uh, you know, and with the fact that it isn't two or three fouls before the two-meter guard is tossed out, he's all be tossed out on the first foul, uh, you know, we tend to maybe think that, that two-meter switching isn't as important as it used to be. But I, I still think there's a place for it in the game, and as these rules swing back around, uh, you'll see its use. Now, in volume one, we really got into the avenues that we move on the two-meter switch. I'm not going to review that. I just want to look at it as a team, and then we'll look at it out uh, in the pool in just a moment. All right, with the foul, uh, at, with the ball coming in here, and say the foul at two meters, if we have decided to make a switch. Now, with this defender in this position, He's going to call in one of these. He can't call in this side because he'd have to come through those players. So he's going to call in either the point or he's going to call in either the 11 o'clock. Now let's just assume in this case he calls in the 11 o'clock and we draw the angles here and we refront the hole. And as I said, this is in volume one as we make this direct line out. But while we're doing this, our goalkeeper knows that any time we run a switch that we the only shot can come this is the only man that's going to have a shot. But we're going to do what we call filling gaps, stunning, to make this two-meter man think we want to slow his thought process down. 
So starting over here with this guy, we couldn't, we can't really fill a gap out here because we could get burned back door for a shot. But this player simply will just rise up in the water and kind of look like he's going to leap out and settle right back down in this good defensive position. This guy will do the same thing over here. All six of these players, ha defensive players, have a responsibility here. And really what we're saying here is this two-meter man knows that if the, either one of these guys can get free, hey, that's the best pass he can make. So if we make the big stunt for a moment here and here, we jam his radar for a moment. And he says, oh, I've got that. Oh, and then he sees, no, he doesn't. Now, as we're because we're buying time in this, in this switch out here. As this switch comes in here and this man comes out to defend here, we will simply move to gaps. And what I mean by that, this player will make this guy here footsteps over here. He'll come crashing over here, but not so far that he, that, that this, not so far that the two meter man can throw out his play. He'll fake this way and then right back onto his player. Because we want the guy to say, oh, I had this pass. Oh, no, I don't. Well, I've got, oh, no, I don't have that one. Well, I got this one. No, I don't. And by then, uh, we've shut it down. So that's what we mean by filling gaps. This player would come this way. Uh, Phil here just for a moment. This player would stunt towards this player. This is a man, as I said, would make the big move here. And we're just filling in between. But the key thing is that this is going to be the only free man. And we just don't want him to know that right away. But the goalkeeper knows it all of the time so he can be on uh, the ball. So we'll see this now as we get in the water. But I really believe this is still an integral part of the game. I, I know that some of the Smaller teams physically, internationally, do a lot of first foul switches uh, rather than even dropping back. Uh, they feel, well, if we first foul switch, psychologically, the referee isn't going to eject a new player on that two-meter man all of the time, not eject him as quickly. And I think that might be true. And I also think if you get a couple of fouls here, theoretically, under the rules, you could foul ten times as long as it's not an ejection foul. But I, my opinion is if you go past a couple of fouls, you're probably going to be long gone on that third, certainly on the fourth one. My theory is, hey, still run a switch in there. Bring a fresh person in. Hey, he may be gone on the first foul, but psychologically, maybe you've got a better chance of lasting one additional foul uh, by making uh, the two-meter switch out. So this is what we call two-meter switching, but we call it two-meter switching and filling the gaps I think it's a very important principle. All right, let's move to the water now and check these things out. All right, a brief look now at scrimmage play with the, uh, with the defense at two meters. Now, there was the foul. Look at how tough it is for him to switch across with that good, big, strong two-meter man. We front with a smaller player. He calls another man in. Uh, good, good action there and refronts the hole and saves the uh, shot situation. All right, looking at it again, keeping contact, looking to keep those hips down, hands up, working, keeping that tight contact. All right, there's the foul. Now he's got a circle to this side. He's called for a switch. There it comes. We refront and back out he goes very nice All right now we're just looking at uh, reaching you know cinching up and, and reaching out uh, getting in a fouling position but trying to play that ball uh, so that uh, we don't get thrown out now look at that right there two hands up that ball that means that ball fell short one of his fellow players was going to make the uh, steal and we certainly don't want uh, to give that ball back to the two meter man with a foul there when it can really be our ball so uh, good job by that two meter defensive player All right now he's working uh, left shoulder and then he gets a hand up he's working left and right uh, cinched up uh, tight contact there it is over the right shoulder uh, now he's working back to the other side uh, there's a hand up see he saw the shot coming from outside so he's working to defend that there he tries to make the steal on one side almost as beaten now he's back again both hands now leaning in on that player but making it look like you know that their foul isn't going uh, you know, they're not going to get an ejection foul tightened up. And it's so tough to work here. Uh, but y this is why you need to train specialists in here and hope for a lot of help from your friends. To some uh, team drills uh, that would apply both to pressing uh, and drop back defenses. And just work in the half court, we're going to start with some stair stepping. Now, we're not, we'll, we'll let there be unlimited fouls at two meters uh, in this case. Uh, we're just simply going to half moon out and run some drives through and follow in, step in behind him. There he comes. We step in, step in, force the ball outside. 
Uh, here, there's an overpass, just like we said, that could lead to a time switch. Now, there's a nice stair step back in. Here comes the drive. We just keep blowing the whistle. Look at him play touch tag there. You see that? He didn't reach out and grab the shoulder and take a chance of a shoulder injury. Just let that player know uh, that he had uh, that particular drive shut down. There's the pass to two meters. There's the drop this time from the wing, and they stuff the ball. But just simply what we said on the chart, and that is that that defensive player player uh, will drop in if the drive moves behind his back. Here it comes. If it's coming behind his back, see him drop in for help. Uh, there was an outside shot. Uh, missed the cage. All right, let's just keep watching this for a moment. Uh, here we're back out, just spreading it out. And you have to reset this, but we're not, you know, we're not switching at two meters, just working on this drive. There's a stop and go. He drops right in, takes that away, outside shot. Nice two-hand hand, uh, two hand pull down uh, by the goalkeeper. We'll just watch it a couple of more times. Uh, this is a drill we run a lot. I think stair-stepping is really critical could, to good defensive play because it gets players thinking, uh, well, I've got to take my player, but, boy, I've got to help my friends, too. And there, everyone was helping each other right across that back line. All three blues uh, were working, uh, you know, to really protect each other. All right, now, and then this is what you can do in drills. We just sw simply switch the team. Uh, we put the blues on offense, whites on D, ball, there it comes. Here comes the drive in, and look at they're shutting it down. It probably fell off a little bit too much outside, and they got the ball in the cage. I don't think that uh, defender on the driver needed quite that much help. I just watch it about two more times here. All right, here's the drive, passes behind. There it's stepping back. Now, that was a little bit better. Here comes the next drive, stepping in. There's nothing there, ball back out. All right, back in, here comes the drive, step, step, there it is, step, and there was the uh, hand touch uh, to, uh, you know, let the player know uh, that he was uh, cut down from behind. We call this stair-stepping. Phase from uh, stair-stepping into time switches, another important team concept. Here comes the pass. We're going to start this out with a big mistake but it was a good chance. Now you see that player fouled and dropped right back in, just as he should have. But look at the other outside player drift from the point over. And uh, see, it wasn't necessary to run a time switch there. Never run a time switch when you can foul and drop. You run a time switch uh, when uh, you foul outside, and it would be impossible uh, for you making that foul to drop directly back in. And that's where you need the help of a teammate, and that's where we get a time switch. But as we look at these things, as we've said before, it's good to look and see a mistake uh, because we can uh, learn from that. All right, now there's the foul. Now there's the switch over. There's the time switch. We've covered it down. They get the ball alive, probably about four or five seconds off the clock. There's the pass out. There's the foul outside. Here comes the time switch across. The ball is alive and comes in. Back in, okay, there's that foul at two meters. Back outside, there we go, the foul outside. All right, you see he's dropped in. We get a little help there because the player chased and was a little slow uh, to arrive uh, on this side. All right, ball back in, foul at two meters, overpass. Now, see, he can foul and drop directly, and he does. And that's just the way uh, they should uh, work that. Uh, a, a few more uh, time switches. Uh, we put the whites on D now. Here comes the ball in. There's the foul. Back out. Here's the chase. There's the foul outside. Now let's count the time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There was eight seconds before they could get the ball back to two meters. Here's the foul. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven. All right, seven seconds to the foul. We're just buying time. There it is on this side. There's the switch in and cut down. And remember, the goalkeeper calls, uh, tells that player to go back out and attack the one who's fronted. Phasing from time switches, we move right into two meter switch outs and stunning the gap on the outside. Uh, I think still a very important concept. Uh, even in this day and age. There it is. 
There was the gap outside. Now look at charging that ball on the outside with that switch coming out. The goalkeeper's always lined up on the ball because he knows the man we switch from is the man who has the shot. There it is again. And just keep watching. All six players are active out there and watch the different positions as we work through this. Uh, concentrate this next time on the players on the outside and see as they fill uh, the gaps. All right, here it comes. There's the ball in. There's the foul. See, there's the switch. You see them fill the gaps. That time, uh, the player coming in on the switch got his hand on the two-meter pass, knocked it down. Watch the outside line again here. Here comes the ball in. Look, at there's the gaps. And the gap was a short distance that time, so the white defensive player was able to cross over and actually get a hand uh, on, uh, on the ball. Uh, you know, he can't go too far because we don't want a, a triangle switch here, uh, but uh, there was plenty of room to work then. Here it comes again. There's that gap. And here, and forced the lob that time, you see. Uh, goalkeeper lined up on the outside shot as we take the two-meter switch out. Now look at the gaps outside. Here comes the shot, and we make uh, the beautiful uh, uh, play there. A very important concept, uh, gap filling, uh, as I say, it just... It, it's still a part of the game, and we just don't want to lose it. Let's watch it just one final time now. They'll drop the ball in. Uh, we'll get the two-meter switch out. Here it comes. There's the switch. There's the gaps. And they line up very, very nicely and make the play. Before moving along, let's go back to the chart of uh, stair stepping and gap filling and just I, I just want to cover a couple of more points so we said this but I want to emphasize it when we're getting these cross drives like this and we're stair stepping back in we're not just stair stepping uh, to cut down the shot but we're really stair stepping to take this two meter man's pass away uh, to really close those passing lanes down and get him to put the ball to the outside uh, where we want it so that's really important now on filling gaps Let's just take a look at this man and the, the way we'd set this up earlier with a switch coming out here, we've said the goalie's gonna be lined up on the ball here. Now looking at this man here, as he fills the gap, if this defense is scrunched up here, he can literally go between and practically attack either man. But in the final analysis, the goalie is expecting the shot from here and this is his man here and we don't want triangle switches here. So if they're scrunched up, sure, he can move in between, but if they're really spread, we don't want him to get an overcommit here and have that two-meter man with a goalie line up on this guy come out here for the shot. So he'll just simply stunt that gap stunt, and we know he's back on here. So that, that's, that's really important. If it's spread too much, don't try to go too far. Otherwise, both these guys are liable to be free. So just you know, simply make that move and right back. All right, let's move along here, and I want to uh, talk a little bit about counter defense. Let me just put up another chart. And... Counter defense is, is very, very important. Most teams are starting to counter very well, uh, particularly in the United States where people tend to be swimmers. Let's put the ball here and just simply say this. In our form of counter defense, you know, the idea obviously is, if, is to start rolling back on defense as, you, as that shot clock moves down. When you know a shot's gonna come from your team or you're running out of time, start peeling back on defense anyway. That, the, Final analysis is one of the best ways to stop the counter, obviously. Very important. But once that counter starts, you've taken the shot, for example, the, all your players have got to rip back and, and jam up what we would call a strike zone area and really jam the middle because you want to isolate the free man to the outside. And if it's a one-on-one -on -one breakaway, you're just or a two-on-one, might not be much you can we can help you with there. You're just not recognizing getting your outside defensive players back. But but otherwise, what's going to happen, if you jam back with all your players effectively and get this area shut down, we call this guarding from the inside out, shut that two to four meter area down, get the good communication with the goalie, he's looking out, then move right out and attack out into this area, get that outside man, get the free man isolated to the outside. But if you really shut this down, the goalkeeper then is going to have to go to a secondary pass. He can't make the direct pass down. Uh, to a free man. If he goes to half court, and we're coming back in this case, hey, go over and pick, We like. this is what we like to do in our system, jam back and pick up that first goalie pass if it's at halfway or maybe just up, uh, you know, into this, this area of the front court. Now, if you're gonna do this, get over and put the pressure on this man, but don't follow him, because if you follow him, 
you've got too far to drop to be able to help in the D. You just want to harass the shot. Now, in this case, if it's coming farther, you can foul here and, and, and drop, and that's probably what you should do. But in all cases, and this is very important, if there was an O coming free here, you can't chase out and get this man. You are one of those guys jamming. Same thing here. If this guy is coming free, forget that foul and drop. Get back and jam in here. But guard from the inside out, get that defense back, and pick up that first goalie pass if he can't go all the way with it. If he's got to go to half court or down here just inside a half court, as I say, stop it here. Uh, pick it up uh, at the point of the pass. And we'll look at that uh, some as uh, we go back to the water. All right, now I'm going to move over to the other side briefly here, and let's start talking about defensive structures and pressing and drop back defenses or, or, or playing between them or rotating from one to the other are all, uh, you know, obviously important things. And let's address both of those uh, briefly, and then we'll look at all sorts of uh, press work and, and uh, drop back work uh, in the water in a moment. Let's look at the press. And press is probably the most popular defense in the United States. Uh, simply what we're saying here, all of the perimeter players are attacking out really uh, cinching up on, the, on their men outside. Uh, the two-meter guard can be fronting or he can be behind. And l let's just comment on that uh, for a moment. At lower level, younger players tend to play in smaller pools. Uh, it's a wonderful defense, uh, the press, and it's wonderful. This, here we got the ball here, pressing out here to do what we call front, meaning we front the hole. And if this is a good player, your two-meter man is not great here, good, but maybe not great, you'll probably have pretty good success in fronting him. Then we'll move the defensive players in the lane. This player can't really lane too much because you don't want to give the free drive here. But now this guy could cheat out a little bit. We're talking about being in a passing lane to his man. This player is in a lane here. This player is in a lane here. He can really cheat out more. And if that ball is mispassed, intercepted, obviously you can see wonderful uh, counterattack positioning. And that's what a lane press is all about. But simply stated, as you get to the upper levels of college ball, and particularly internationally, these players on the perimeter and this two-meter man are generally so skilled that it makes it far more difficult uh, to front and press. That doesn't mean that you don't press, because pressing is a wonderful defense. And it doesn't mean at the start, at the end of the counterattack, that you don't front this hole. But just simply, once you're beaten around, it's going to be very difficult to get back in front of the top uh, two-meter man. Also, with these players so good on the outside, they can access passes into that two-meter man that may outposition you and cause you a four-meter or an ejection or give them an excellent shot. It just becomes a greater, far more difficult task to press in front and so you see a lot of international defensive, pressing defenses, but you tend to see once uh, you're beaten here, you tend to see this man playing more behind here, and you tend to see these players getting to a more conservative uh, position uh, on their players. But certainly pressing has, uh, you know, is, is an important defensive structure. Now, as we've said, is this two-meter man, when we're playing behind, uh, it's become very popular to get rid of, excuse me, this two-meter guard playing behind the two-meter man. It's been very popular to get rid of him with the quick ejections. You have seen far more drops. You see teams press, and then, you know, they might go to immediate drop. They might press and drop after the first foul, whatever. But you start to see a lot of drop-back defenses. Let's take a brief look at drop-back defenses, and, and there's all kinds of them, a variety of them. A very, very simple one would be what we'd call a six-drop. Uh, with a two-meter man playing center water cage, center cage water here, being a right-hander and tending to come this way anyway, this being a difficult position unless he's a left-hander to score from anyway, uh, these players could press out, drop a little bit, but basically kind of be in a sloughing type of outside uh, defense. This player is really dropped in stunning, but really has done what we call a six drop, keeps the guy from coming this way, forces the shot to the bad angle. Goalie is aware of that. It's a simple defense in a drop, one of the simplest, but can be uh, quite effective, uh, particularly at some of the lower level. All right, now, another very popular drop, and this is probably the one that has been used most um, in, in the history of time, particularly a lot in European ball, uh, sloughing and then finally really getting into a drop. We call it the 11, 12, and 1 o'clock drop. We pinch in a little here, but primarily the drop to take the two-meter man out of the game, saying, again, if this guy is going to be ejected a lot, we've got to deny the ball in here. 
and the players, but in an 11, 12, and 1 o'clock drop, they're just in what we'd call a straight angle drop. We've got the ball here. This player has dropped in to take uh, the pass away from the two-meter man. If the player comes over here with the ball, this X defender moves out. This player may move in, or this player may move in. It just depends on the circumstances, but they're dropping in and out in what we'd call straight lines, 11, 12, and 1 o'clock drops. Now, when we get to a point drop and a gap drop, we start getting a little more sophisticated. And if you look at this, you'll see that these look exactly the same. You'll see the guard behind here and the three men across here. Well, maybe this is like a five-man defense against a six-on-five. Well, this outside structure is similar, but believe me, these are two entirely different concepts. First of all, in the point drop, we're taking greater liberties. We're dropping a little more here, but never too far off because this is for sure going to be a right-hander. Again, we're saying we'll take a few more liberties here. A lot of times, this is a right-hander. Um, this man wants to work this direction anyway. We'll probably pinch back here a little more. But in the point drop, what we're really saying is we're dropping this man not only off of his outside player, we're not going to bring him back out. And these two players are going to play just like they would in five-man defense, and they're going to work among these three players outside, and they're just going to have to work the outside. And we are really shutting, totally shutting down this pass. So what you got is the outside shot, and these players are playing like they do in the inner you know, men, but not off as much as they would be in now what looks to be the same but isn't, and this is what we call a gap drop. And the gap drop is something we started working on uh, our, our national team. Again, we're protecting to keep this two-meter guard from being thrown out as often, and this looks the same, but it isn't now, are going to be moving here. These two players were moving on three. Here, all three players are going to be working with the same concept, trying to deny the ball here. That we're really coming in here. The rule here is just get back to this guy. If he's going to get the ball, you arrive when the ball does. Again, feeling that we can cheat more from here, we're really now, very, very simply, and into the inside. Now we open up beautiful counter lanes. In this case, we have say maybe we're dropping this player back in. This player is in that good. We have brought this man out. He attacked earlier. And the gap, as far as I'm concerned, uh, is a beautiful here because you can't, you can't take, if this player is an important point. Now, if this guy is playing somewhat center cage, we give them, although they don't score it, we give them a, a six meter shot. He's going attack really right at that mid court. Now, he almost was able to check that uh, off at midcourt. All right, here's the shot. Uh, the goalie's up with the ball. The white team kicks out in the count. And let's see what happens. The ball's going to come off to the right side. Defensive work against the counterattack. Uh, into the half, we see the two-meter switch out. So we see filling the gap. Uh, back out, another pass in. There's the foul at two meters. Uh, we're after here. You, know, we, you, you work on those players so they can guard. Let me stress this, too. You really to, to get play good defense. Kind of skipped in there. He's looking. There's the drive. All right, nice defense. There was the three, really, of the major things that we took away. All right, they're switching.